try not to bust my butt getting into this space walker too. It's very inelegant. Yeah, you, don't, you don't want to go visit a fellow builder and bust his, his uh, project on the first build. What'd you break? Alright, so today I traveled out to Pelham, Alabama to check out an awesome aircraft that is available from Plans. And uh, John, introduce yourself here. Hi, I'm John. <laughs> so I found John on one of the many Facebook groups that you guys are a part of and join in on on different type of airframes. And there's one specifically for the Spacewalker 2 and what's the other one listed? Spacewalker Revolution and... Uh... Somebody added Fly Baby just because it looks similar. Okay. So there's, there's a group of uh, interested people in this design. I'm personally interested. It's a very nostalgic looking aircraft. It's tube and fabric. So you got the chromoly fuselage, wood parts throughout uh, the fuselage, and then the wings are entirely made of wood. And of course, the whole thing is covered in fabric. So I've got a personal interest in this, and I want to come out and visit with John and check out his project. All right, John, so we can start off and just explain the story and how this came to be. How is it sitting in your shop today? All righty. Well, in the 90s, um, I got the bug, uh, experimental uh, home-built bug. Um, I was actually working in a Warbird shop building P-40s, um, but decided after looking, you know, I spent a, a long time looking at all the different designs out there. Um, I like sheet metal, I like composites, but I want to go 100 miles an hour, um, and I don't have anywhere to go. Um, and the spacewalker kept coming up as something interesting. Um, I looked at them at Sun and Fun, sat in them, um, finally uh, got around to call in the factory, uh, went and flew the uh, factory plane, and it flew exactly like all the magazine articles said, and it flew exactly like I thought it would. And this was Sun and Fun when? What year? Well, I didn't fly it at Sun and Fun, but I'd seen it at Sun and Fun in the late 90s. Okay. Um, was looking at it every time I went down there, looking at all the planes, trying to decide what I wanted to build when I grew up, so to speak. Um, and, and I'm in a suburb of Birmingham, and in the midst of all that, a kit, spacewalker kit, uh, popped up just south of San Francisco. Uh, so I corresponded with the owner, a uh, real nice guy. Um, best I can tell, this is a fact, well, not best I can tell, this is clearly a factory built kit. Um, everything just pops together. Um, none of the holes are elongated. Uh, you know, everything fits and is aligned. Um, well welded. Um, so anyhow, I flew out there in October of 2020. Uh, had plenty of room on the plane because nobody else was flying then. Uh, went, um, Looked at it, made a deal with the guy, uh, threw it in a rental truck and drove it from um, just south of San Francisco back to Birmingham. Um, got stuck in Albuquerque for a day or two because of a snowstorm. Got back uh, and tornadoes had come through here and I had no, no power at my house for two days. So, heck of a trip. Um, I'd like to say everybody should drive across the country with an airplane once um, I've done it three times now, however, but a uh, ton of fun. Uh, strangely, nobody wanted to go with me. So John, being that this kind of changed up um, uh, through the process of getting plans and then you found a kit, when you received the kit, what did you actually decide to start on first? Um, well, my, my preference was always a kit uh, for this plane. Um, so anyhow, uh, and, and like I said, I corresponded with the, uh, the prior owner and he had bought it from a guy across the airport from him. There's no, I have no idea the history and there's no serial number on here to uh, trace it. Um, but um, there were no surprises when I went and looked at it. Um, so I got it home. Uh, the first thing I did was begin an inventory. Um, 
you know, I certainly my um, it came with some some uh, plans. They were the same as mine, um, revision number and date. Um, and then I had some documents I'd gotten from the factory back when they were in existence, uh, parts lists. So the first thing I did was begin an inventory, um, and at the same time make a list of the hardware and raw materials I was going to need. Um, as well as the the major things, you know, like engine and landing gear and you know bigger non-hardware type parts. Um, since then, um, basically, I will order. Um, I'll kind of look at some project on the plane, like floors, for example. What am I going to need to do the floors? I'm going to need a bunch of plywood. Here's the list of that. Here's the hardware that's going to be needed. Here are the parts that are going to be needed. Uh, so go back through my list. In the process of that, I found out that I had a few minor problems with, with the kit. Um, for example, there are four brake pedals. Front, right, front, left, rear, right, rear, left. Um, I had four pedals of two kinds. Uh, they're handed, and, and so basically I had two front rights and two rear rights. All right, one of the questions I like to ask all builders is what was the most enjoyable part of the build so far and what was the most challenging so far? Um, well, the most challenging, I'll start with that, is it's a frickin' airplane, um, and yeah, all it lacks is finishing up, as we like to joke. Um, you know, there's eight million things that need to be done between where I'm standing today and, and where I'm flying in it. Um, so that's challenging, um, and it's certainly not for everybody. And, and a project like this, um, you know, it's not an easy assembly kit like, you know, some of the manufacturers sell today. And nothing against those. Those are great. This isn't that. Um, if they made such a kit for this, I'd probably be in line to buy it. But I have a lot of things to figure out. You know, again, I got the wrong brake pedals, for example, little things like that. Um, so those kind of things, they add to the frustration, but at the same time, they add to the enjoyment. What do I like the best? Um, Great companies like Dynon Avionics at DynonAvionics.com. AirTech Coatings at AirTechCoatings.com. Airworks at AirWorksAviation.com. Avionation at avnationusa.com. Check the description below for links to these great companies. And visit our website at experimentalaircraftchannel.com for events, our video library arranged in easy to find playlists on specific topics, affiliate products, aviation merchandise, and so much more. If you like these videos that we are producing weekly, Give that like button a click and engage all notifications so you don't miss a single episode. It, it's project management. You know, I'm not building a plane. What I am is managing a project or a program that's got 57 different little projects in it. And when I finish a project on the plane, I feel really good. Um, my skill set, again, is sheet metal. Um, I don't know much about... Um, wood construction. I am not a woodworker. Um, you know, I, I don't, I'm not an expert welder, but I'm learning. So as I'm learning these things and putting things together, when I finish one, to me, it's very satisfying. Um, so like when I bought the kit, the turtle deck was assembled, uh, but some of the uh, joints had broken and it didn't have this um, piece of uh, plywood on the front. So basically, I, I had to take this part, inspect it. Um, I had to make a few repairs to some of the joints here. Um, then I had to figure out, you know, the plans show you a shape and tell you to attach it. Yeah, that was, that's basically the instructions I had. Um, so I had to figure out how to cut it. This is my second uh, attempt. The first one I planned to be um, um, a throwaway. Uh, but I found a good way to make these circle cuts, not by hand, because my hand doesn't do that straight. Um, I, I went back to my, my Warbird days of, um, I made, actually I've got it right here, um, made a template out of uh, some construction uh, paper that I keep in here. Uh, tried that, then made a template maybe out of cardboard, made some adjustments of where the cuts and, and lines need to be. Um, put it on, take it off, you know, 37 times, clamp it, glue it, uh, take it out of the mold, uh, 
and inspect it, trim it, and, and now it's done. And, and, you know, that's really satisfying to me. All right, now for the technical specs. I actually just received a set of plans myself that I'll be hopefully building here in the future after my project is done, current project. So here are the specs. Empty weight, 790 to 850 pounds, depending on engine installation. Gross weight, 1400 pounds, or it's saying 1200 pounds ultralight, or what we say light sport, which would be 1320 in the US. Design load factor is plus four and a half to three G's at 1350. Uh, wing loading gross, 95 pounds at 1200 pounds, 11 pounds at 1400 pounds. V&E never exceeds 155 miles per hour. Top speed of 125 miles per hour. Cruise speed, depending on engine and installation, 115 miles per hour. Stall power on is 42 miles per hour. Stall power off is 50 miles per hour. Wing span of 28 feet. Wing area 126 square feet. Uh, length is 19 foot nine. Height five foot five inches. Fuel capacity in that aluminum fuel tanks, 18 gallons. Seats two. Horsepower of 65 to 150 horsepower. Spacewalker two. I think this has a pretty good horsepower range. If I remember, it was like, it was like 65 to 125, something like a, a broad, A broad range of yeah. horsepower that you could put in here. So what, what is your thought process for powering this thing? Um, if they still imported um, Walter engines from Europe, those inverted inline four cylinders, I would have one of those on here. That just, to me, looks like what this plane needs. but. Um, they're not really supported in the U.S., so that's that's a non-starter for me. Um, so uh, you're, you're stuck, really, with... Um, I think a Rotax would work really well in here and be cost-efficient, um, but it, it wouldn't probably match the sound and the look that this plane needs. You know, it's 24 inches wide. The jugs are supposed to hang out the sides. Um, you know, Rotax really isn't, isn't made that way, so... Um, most people seem to go with a uh, 0235. A 290 is probably uh, pretty common, but uh, those seem to be getting a little harder to support um, in a 320. Um, my plan was to get one of those three, uh, whatever fell into my lap, and uh, looks like I, I found a, a pretty good lead on a 0235, so that's probably what I'm going to settle with. All right, so moving back, moving aft, what do you plan on doing for the instrument panel? Are you going to keep it nostalgic or do a modern? What's the plan for the instrument panel? Yeah, my plan is to have instruments. Um, same as everything else, whatever uh, falls into my lap. Uh, that is, again, if you look at this from a project management point of view, that's kind of the last thing you want to look at because instruments get cheaper and better. Um, and if you buy them today, they're going to, drop in value um, so you don't want to be storing instruments so uh, whatever kind of jumps in my lap um, part of me wants to make it nostalgic I mean it is a nostalgic looking plane but at the same time modern electronic instruments are, are crazy efficient um, so I'm I'm still on the fence uh, most likely I'll have a pretty basic um, um, set of instruments in the front but in the back I'll probably have something electronic um, like a Dynon uh, or something like that but uh, again that's, that's kind of far down the road for me right now all right all this all this square footage of wood that's sitting beside us here what do you what can you tell us about the wings on this, this design here um, yeah so I'm not an engineer um, uh, I read a few books uh, seriously though uh, it, it's a pretty heavy spar. Uh, the, the the word on the street is these are pretty darn overbuilt. It's rated for plus six, minus three Gs. I uh, can't imagine, you know, 
I, I don't know what your typical Cessna is rated for, but uh, that's certainly more than adequate for something like this. Um, they're, they're pretty heavy. Um, the, the research I've done uh, doesn't show any structural issues with them over the years. Um, really the only change in the design I've been able to find of substance is the metal attach straps that connect the outer wings to the uh, inner wings uh, were changed from 80 thousandths to 100 thousandths um, and their laminations of three uh, thicknesses times uh, four for each wing. Um, so just look at this real quick, it looks to be a plywood that is cut on a router for the ribs which is a really simple thing to scratch yeah. build. And then the spar is made up of what, what kind of wood do you believe it is? Uh, it's spruce. It's spruce. Yep. Okay, so. With some uh, plywood uh, sides. All right, so at the end of these wings, and it, what attaches to the fuselage is these metal, sheet metal pieces. Yep. And, and how is that built up to uh, make it strong? So these are 4130. Um, this uh, kit apparently is kind of old. It came with the old ones in 80 thousandths, which. Uh, I, I think people build in the one seat, uh, Spacewalker one or Revolution one use, uh, but the uh, the plans were changed at some point. Um, I know the latest plans uh, show these as a hundred thousandths, and they're a lamination of three, um, and so there are uh, obviously it goes to the other end of the wing, but there's a uh, one on the top, one on the bottom of the spar in the front, top uh, and bottom uh, on the other side as well. Um, and then also on the center wing section. So you've got a whole bunch of these. Um, so I'm uh, obviously replacing these um, with the uh, 100 thou. And then those are just attached straight through with some AN3 hardware that long enough to go through the spar. Uh, correct, the AN3 bolts um, run through the spars on these. There are some uh, wooden um, reinforcement plates underneath them just to help spread the load. All right, so kind of in closing, what have, uh, what's the goal for getting this done? And if you could share maybe a tip to a fellow builder on, on staying engaged and gaining momentum on your project. First of all, my goal, you know, it's personal. Um, and I enjoy the journey as much as the destination. So uh, I enjoy the building. Um, yeah, I'd like to have a finished plane. Um, but I don't dread the building part. I mean, I, you know, that, that's why I bought a build-it-yourself plane. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking at the rate that I'm going, two to three years, um, you know, barring any, you know, unforeseen dumpster fire years we may have coming up, um, my, my shop space is limited. Um, I can put the uh, center spars on and do some work with it, but I'm not going to get it out of here with the center spars on. Uh, more importantly, I can't fit the wings to it in here. Um, I've <laughs> tried drawing it out, and clearly it's not happening. So um, I'll have to find a larger place, and that's a problem because this being my basement, um, you know, when you did the 31 day challenge, I think uh, 28 days, I was able to come down here. I think my worst day was, you know, 45 minutes. Most days I did more. Um, you know, if I have to drive someplace to work on it, I'm, you know, by default, I'm going to be less efficient. Um, I don't know. I've looked at the cost of building a little building out back here that would hold the whole thing. Um, looked at the cost of maybe moving to a, uh, um, a fly-in um, airport community. Um, but that's the key, being able to work on it often and still keep the rest of your life going. I mean, I put it off because, you know, graduate school and family and, and stuff like work and junk like that. Um, so, uh, that, that's probably the big key is, you know, you may like the building, but you may not be able to, you know, if you, if you have it at an airport that's 20 miles away, cause you got a great deal on a hangar, that's great. But you know, how often are you going to want to go there? You're going to want to go there two, three, four times a week. You know, if you go there once every other week, you know, your plan's going to be 14 years and it's not going to look any better than this. I mean, hey, I can sneak down here for an hour before anybody notices I'm missing. Well, if you've made it this far, you must be really interested in building one of these Spacewalker 2 aircraft. Check out the links below, and to order plans, send a message to cfxarrow at gmail.com. Thanks for watching this week's episode of the Experimental Aircraft Channel. Remember to like, subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next one.